Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to your seven chakra reading. What we're going to do here is lay out seven cards, one for each chakra, and basically see how each one is doing. Um, this can let you know which area you might need to work on and which areas are strengths for you. You can take this as literally or as symbolically as you want. Maybe you're really into working with your chakras and this will give you a bit of a clue of what you can actually do energetically to work on that energy center. Or you can just think of this as areas of your life that are either going well or could use some attention as symbolized by, you know, the seven chakra system. So go ahead and pick your pile. It's just pile one, pile two, and pile number three. Okay, pile number one. We are going to start right at the bottom with your root chakra. And for that, you got the card, the Eight of Pentacles, which I think is a pretty good card to get for your root chakra. This really tells me that you guys are uh, pretty grounded. You have your feet on the ground. And I don't mean this in like a ho-hum, like I'm such a dull, trudgy type of person, as people kind of think when we talk about grounded people. I mean this in a really, really good way. You guys have a handle on your life, you know, you can hold down your job and you excel in the workplace or, you know, if you're, if you're in school, then it's that. You're not intimidated by like life's physical problems. Um, I feel like you guys would be really good in a crisis. And you're really like solidly working on your future. You know, some people are, uh, are real dreamers. Um, in the sense that they have their head in the clouds and they have all these ideas and hopes for the future, but they don't actually take any practical steps to put them in motion. So you guys very well could have your visionary hopes and dreams in the future. I'm absolutely not saying that, you know, being grounded takes away from your higher levels, right? What I'm saying is you guys can really bring that down to earth and you can take practical steps that will actually take your visionary dreams and hopes and all of that you can put that into real motion. This guy is working away on something. This is this is such a firm start. <laughs> you guys, you guys really have a firm foundation. And I think maybe in the past you guys had um, maybe some struggles with you know physical reality, with connecting with the earth, with staying grounded. But uh, you guys have put in the work, and you're really getting a handle on that. So I really like to see this. You guys are having such a good, you have, this is such a good foundation to start this off with. So moving on up uh, into your second chakra or your sacral chakra, the five of wands. So you guys are feeling a little bit embattled. Maybe, so since the five of wands here is in the sacral position, that really has to do with your creativity and your really like power struggles. And that can also manifest in like your sexual relationships, even doesn't necessarily have to be sexual, but interpersonal relationships. So there's a little bit of a power struggle here. Um, I don't know if you guys have power struggles with people in your personal life, or if this is more of a society wide thing. Um, if you belong to some group that has been treated unfairly and you feel, you know, like you guys are trying to get the recognition and the respect that you guys deserve. That could be where this is coming from. Maybe you have been in relationships where the power was always one sided and you're struggling to be heard and to to feel to feel comfortable and to feel safe. There's definitely something here about not feeling not feeling secure. There's a lack of security. It's almost like whatever was going on with your root chakra when you were younger in the past or maybe even in past lives that uh, you got a grip on like your basic like existence level security. And now you're try trying to find that level of security in your relationships in the way you interface with other humans, really. I really see the sacral chakra as how we deal with with other humans and i really think you guys can get there since whatever you guys had to do to get your firm footing sorted out with your root chakra with your grounded energies that will ripple on up to your sacral chakra and uh if this has to do with expressing your creativity maybe you guys need to find a more like specific way 
to express your creativity, you know? You know, if you're a painter and you're always sitting down at the canvas creating these really broad scale abstract works of art and you feel like you can never finish them or you feel like nobody understands them, maybe it helps to make something a little more concrete. Uh, you know, actually, like just one example that comes to mind is maybe you could do something like making a deck of tarot cards because that has a, like an inherent structure in it and that can really help you um, kind of channel your creative energies into something that is easier to actually finish and something that is easier to communicate to the rest of the world. So bringing in a little bit of structure can help you calm down this chaos uh, that you're feeling in terms of your power struggles and your creativity. Moving on up to the third chakra, the solar plexus chakra, ace of wands. You guys have such a fiery spark. To get the ace of wands in like the center of your your personal authority like this is is really cool and uh since it comes with the uh five of wands here i sort of feel like since this, we have the fire energy and the energy of manifestation with the wand here but we also it is also an ace which since that's in your solar plexus i think you might be a little bit i don't know if it's confused but i feel like your sense of identity is rather open like you have a lot of potential about where you can take your identity and what kind of ways you can manifest yourself. And I think that's actually tied in here with why there's this conflict, um, like potential power struggles with the people around you. If you could get your solar plexus chakra to be a little more defined, if you could get more sure about your own personal identity, then you wouldn't need to feel these struggles for power with other people, right? I, I feel like almost um, you feel conflicted when other people don't validate your individuality. And so there's definitely something here about you need to be more sure or something that you need to be. Some people have open personalities and open identities where they really um, have the ability to take on more aspects of their personality depending on their environment. And I don't want this to sound negative. I don't want it to, you know, people say, oh, you're just being a chameleon as if that's bad. Um, this this is really can be a strength, it, but it's just, it can be like confusing to the people experiencing it. Like um, I'm really thinking a lot about my husband. Uh, so when I talk about this, I, I want you to guys to know that I'm really not saying that this is a bad thing because, you know, the person I love the most um, is like this. And he talks a lot about how he feels like he doesn't actually have a, like, really firm sense of identity the way I do. He talks about how he feels like his identity is made up of, like, all of these little, like, almost like he's a box and he puts things in the box and all the things in the box make up his identity it's it's hard for me to understand but you guys might get it because i think you're kind of like that um so it's really important for you guys to be in a good environment because you will start to reflect your environment around you and so getting a little bit more comfortable with the fact that your identity is a little more fluid and that it reflects your environment and look for the beneficial parts about that but how you have so much potential about how you are so flexible and how you're not defined by uh, any one way of being, you know, you, you, you guys are, I feel like people who have a more open and fluid identity feel like they're not worthy of love. I don't know why that is, but I have noticed that. So there's a message here, you know, the universe wants you guys to know that there's nothing wrong with you, that there's nothing wrong with having an open identity. There's nothing wrong with, taking on your external environment and reflecting that that's how you decided to be when you came here. And that is going to be a really important tool for how you contribute to the world. It's actually, you know, part of your toolkit for carrying out your mission. This is how you're supposed to be. So <laughs> get, get okay with that. Get comfortable with that. Figure out why you wanted to be this way why it is a strength and then that'll help you work on the potential like pitfalls of it your open identity i think is what is causing one of the one of the things that is causing these power struggles because 
you can't uh, rely on other people to validate your identity for you. You need to uh, validate it for yourself. Once you can do that, even if you're just validating the fact that you have an open identity that reflects your environment, get comfortable with that. Don't expect other people to validate any aspect of your identity. And then you will no, no longer need to be combative with other people. Um, and you won't be reactive and you won't reflect you won't reflect back their hostility. You need to curate what you're reflecting back, what you're absorbing, what you're reflecting back to the world. Absorb and reflect all of the good things, all of the things that are for your best good and for everybody else's highest good, but you do not need to reflect back this level of hostility. Okay, and the fourth card for your fourth chakra, aka your heart chakra, is the hermit. Okay, this really, uh, this is good. Um, <laughs> so your second and third chakra were kind of uh, like absorb absorbing energies almost. Really that energy of an extrovert who is sort of feeling threatened by their external environment, which isn't a good place to be. But the hermit, this is like the ultimate introvert card, right? Um, and it's representing your heart. So really, I think... Any of the issues you guys might be facing with your second and third chakras, you can heal these by retreating into your heart. You guys are led by your heart. That is where your internal authority is. I'm Again, I'm so reminded <laughs> of my husband. He always says, you know, I need to follow my one true heart. That's what you guys need to do. That is where your light is. Your light is, your heart is your inner light. Your, your heart is your, your guiding force. So... Even if you feel like some aspects of yourself are being too like manipulated by external forces, the core of yourself that sits in your heart is not. That is your total sovereign inner authority. So look to your heart chakra, guys, or just like look to your heart in general. Get centered there because you have such a powerful, powerful heart center. And it is all you. The hermit is, is he's not... He's not influenced or affected by external conflicts or external um, stimuli because he is, you know, alone. He's walking his path alone, but not in loneliness, right? There's a huge difference between solitude and aloneness and loneliness. In your heart, you are not lonely. You are sovereign, sovereign, sovereign. And you are, that is your guiding light. And that is how you can also guide others. So yeah, definitely sit in your heart. Um, and I think that is part of the key to resolving um, a little bit of the conflicts that we're seeing in some of the lower chakras. And what's next? Throat chakra, Knight of Cups. I, I love this because you, you got your heart chakra is the hermit where you are totally centered in your own guiding light. And look, then you bring that message out to the world. You are a message of love to others. You know, this isn't even something I need to talk about a lot. You guys, you, you, you like are sitting there cultivating your own inner light. And then the, like, really, this is to have a night card in, for the throat. You guys are, you're, you're good at communicating, especially communicating love. You know how to communicate your emotions. You know how to help other people communicate your emotions. And you're a messenger. You came here to be a messenger of love. <laughs> that's, that's just awesome. And that's basically all we need to say about that. You guys are bringing your love to the world. Don't be afraid to communicate it. You came here to do this. Yeah, and, you know, with all this uh, heart, you know, centered love energy, no wonder you feel embattled down here on planet Earth with this um, conflict energy in your sacral chakra. So, yeah, don't be afraid to communicate your love. Third eye chakra. Wow, okay, I'm going to bring up the last two cards at the same time because they're awesome. <laughs> you got the magician for your third eye and the emperor for your crown chakra. Wow, you guys have topped up a two powerful major arcana. You guys got three major arcana in your chakras. That is fucking awesome. So <laughs> magician, third eye. That is a pretty fucking awesome card to get for your third eye. So you guys are some kind of powerful 
even if you even if you don't feel like it right now, your soul, your consciousness it has like this essence of power that it will manifest probably sometime soon. This is why you're seeing this spread um, and definitely in your life um, if you haven't seen it already, because to get the magician card for your third eye, you have some kind of Okay, sorry, you guys are such powerful witches that I was going to say that you uh, bringing that <laughs> magician card up to the camera like made it fall out of the uh, camera arm. So <laughs> so anyway, you guys have so, so, so much potential in your third eye. It's like nuts. You can, you guys have the potential to be, you know, clairvoyance, like crazy, clairaudient, clairsentient. You're already empathic. It, it's, you are here to do alchemy. You are here to develop your psychic abilities to develop your intuition, to be energy workers. Um, you know, you could apply any number of spiritual, new agey, you know, witchy psychic terms to this. Um, I don't care what like language you use, just I hope you guys can feel the energy of, you know, having the potential to be powerful, powerful agents of change for the collective's highest good. And you are going to be um, coming more and more and more to know what your own particular skills are like what your what the what toolkit you have in your consciousness um how you can bring that out to light while you are here physically in a body and crown chakra <laughs> the emperor the top of my head uh is literally tingling as i look at this you have some kind of powerful like interdimensional ally if you want to think of that as a deity as god as your guides as your own higher self as you and other aspects and other dimensions in past lives you have powerful powerful support now the back of my neck is tingling i'm, ge I'm getting itchy everywhere guys you're making <laughs> you're making me tingle <laughs> There, uh, yeah, you have powerful guidance, powerful support, and, like, I can practically see, like, data streaming into your guys' crown chakra. Like, wow. So, yeah, for you guys, definitely your upper chakras, like, really from the heart up, are, like, so solid and on point. And you've also done the work to heal and, like, fix and i don't mean fix as in like repair although it's that too but fix as in i feel like you have defined your root chakra and it is only going to get better from here on out so the only real issue here is you guys need to work on your sacral and uh the way you perceive power struggles and um i think i basically already said all i want to know all i want to say about that but just looking at all these cards all at once is super cool so you basically don't need to do any more work on your upper chakras you're, you're good. <laughs> um, this is, this is pretty common to like star seeds really, uh, who have these really, uh, advanced and defined and well-articulated upper chakras, but it's like your lower chakras because you're not like good at being here in a body, especially in a human body. So, um, well, I was just talking, talking about star seeds. I don't typically do that a lot unless I'm doing a particular star seed reading, but that is relevant to somebody. So, you know who you are. <laughs> and I think I'll leave it at that, guys. Um, good luck with your power struggles, and I hope to see you again soon. Okay, Pile 2, welcome to your reading. And boy, do I have some good news for you guys. Uh, your Root Chakra card is the Lovers. How awesome is that? This means to me that you guys in this life are going to have a relationship with your Twin Flame. You, some of you already know this and you're already in that. Some of you know your twin flame, but you just haven't like recognized each other yet. And for some of you, this is still coming down the line. But the, what this signals to me to get this in the root chakra position is that you have gone through all of the work required, all of the personal growth, the healing, and the kind of reconciling yourself to this human life. You've done all of those steps that are required to get yourself to a certain level so that you can meet and manifest your twin flame. Um, and not only you have done this, but they have done this as well. 
Uh, a lot of the time, people meet their twin flames when they have like actually given up on relationships. They're like, okay, I'm good. I'm good on my own. I don't need no man or, you know, I don't need no woman, right? <laughs> and you're like, you have like a month of just sitting there going, yeah, you know, I'm going to do it by myself. This is awesome. Um, I'm I'm uh, letting go of that, uh, you know, constant longing for this other person. And then as soon as you've done that, the universe is like, oh, okay, now you're ready. Now here's your twin flame. Um, at least that's what happened to me and my husband. <laughs> and and I, I've seen it happen to other people. So I think that's what ha what's happening here. This is like an awesome t card to get for your root chakra because whatever struggles you guys have gone through in like, you know, living, you know, going through the motions of your life, um, the worst of them are over and you're ready, you know, to move up onto the next level and you're not going to have to do it alone anymore. You're going to be walking down this path, you know, with your, with your lovebird. It's great. <laughs> and... More good news for you guys. Uh, I'm loving how this is working out. Is your second chakra, your sacral chakra, is the world. You guys, so many people, so so many people have like power struggle problems with their sacral or in like blocked creativity. I mean, to get the world card there, you don't have any of that. If you ever have, it's resolved. You've you've worked through that and. You guys have almost unlimited pot potential for how much, you know, like artistic potential you have. You can create and produce whatever it is that you want to be working on. I mean, no wonder, right? Because you've come to this point of stability and ascension with your twin flame. You guys are going to be creating a, almost like a microverse together. Really, like, I feel like this is almost like an atom that is, you know, the universe in microcosm. It is, you know, the microcosm and the macrocosm, like, reaching singularity. That probably sounded like gobbledygook to some people, but it, <laughs> it made sense to me when it was coming out. And to the people who uh, this message is intended for, it it will make sense to you guys. You, you guys. you guys know what I'm saying. So, so far, so good. You guys have healed lower chakras, like, unreal. And more is the Ace of Swords for your solar plexus. You have a clear, almost like a sharp, a sharply defined, clear sense of your own internal identity. You have no confusion about who you are, what you want, or where you're going in life. It is, it is defined. And I think the only, like, caution here is that be careful not to be too sharp with people, <laughs> right? You might have a little bit of, because you have so much, like you're sitting on just this insane, like volcano of energy. Uh, for some people, it's a little too much and you might be projecting yourself out onto them in a way that you might unintentionally be, you know, hurting their feelings or being a little too overbearing or intimidating. Um, maybe people just think you're so fucking smart that like they're scared of you. <laughs> stuff like that or that other people if you if you find other people are like shitting on you they might actually be so like they can tell that you are so firm in your sense of self that they're threatened by it because they don't feel like that at all and that makes people lash out so with this people can really be you might think that people are acting a certain way for one reason. They might, you might think, oh, these people are shitting on me. It's because, you know, they hate me and I'm horrible. Well, no, it's because they actually or they admire you so much that they feel threatened by it. So just keep that in mind. And uh, I mean, there's no reason you need to water yourself down, but if it becomes impractical for you, if you find that everywhere you go, you're feeling, um, feeling like there's resistance and people are always getting in your way. If you have like major, major frustration dreams, like you're trying to run down a hallway to get 10, 10 things done, but you're just like, you know, raw, like just like running through mud. Like, like your whole body is in mud, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it can be useful to just adopt a little bit more of a like pragmatic approach to dealing with the humans around you because it'll just smooth your path. Some of you, some of you might want to look up human design. Some of you are manifestors. Absolutely. I'll just throw that out there. Um, you'll know if that seems interesting to you and you can go ahead and look that up. Human design manifestor.
Um, you can run your chart. Some of you, not all of you will be manifestors because it's not just manifestors who have this kind of awesome energy, but definitely some of you are. And if you are a manifestor, reading about manifestors will give you a certain sense of validation that you have never received before anywhere else. Okay, and moving on to your heart chakra. Five of Cups. Okay, so here we go with the first um, little bit of, I guess, bad news. But really, this isn't bad news. It's good news because this is showing you uh, where you can channel some of your energy and some of your attention and what you can heal in order to, you know, evolve onto bigger and better things. So Five of Cups, this is a lot of you know, it's pain. The five of cups is shitty. You guys are going through a hard time, you know, with depression and anxiety and feeling all of those crappy feels. I don't need to dwell on what they are too much because, you know, we all know what it's like to feel like shit. You guys feel, you guys feel like shit and it's coming like directly out of your heart. So there is some heart healing that needs to be going on here. I don't think that is going to be too much of a struggle really for you guys. I don't think, you know, this isn't like this five of cups in your heart isn't forever. This is the temporary energy. Um, and with this foundation you guys have, it's not going to be like a problem. <laughs> um, it's just something you're going to need to pay a little bit of attention to. So you need to be finding a way to be cultivating, to be cultivating peace and love in your heart and to really be able to sit in your heart and enjoy it there take some of this energy this like major potential energy you have in your lower chakras and you want to be able to like kind of replicate that in your heart you guys need to get comfortable feeling your emotions get comfortable receiving love this isn't it's not just that you guys have troubles like giving love you have trouble receiving love and that is exactly why you have trouble giving love right so with your twin flame you know either already with you or on its way Twin flame relationships aren't like automatically easy, right? They're actually here to be catalysts for us. So you might find your twin flame saying something to you like, you're always holding something back. You know, what are you holding back? You know, and maybe even like, you can't, you know, we can't have a complete relationship unless you, you know, give everything to me. What are you holding back? So there needs to be, well, I mean, it's up to you, right? You can keep holding back if you want but it's probably not in your best interest to do so your your life will be more fulfilling in every way if you can whatever it is whatever aspect of yourself whatever aspect of your heart you have built walls up around if you can bring those walls down then the flow of love both in and out will be restored and you know <laughs> the that is the single most important thing you guys can be doing to heal and to evolve your consciousness and to improve your life is to get more comfortable with love. That's not easy. I mean, it's simple, right? It's like, oh, you know, just take down your barriers, like tear down the wall and uh, receive more love. That's that's simple, but it's not easy. I know it's not easy, but that is... Uh, I also don't think you need to worry about it too much. This is like, this is just what you're going through. I feel like this energy has been rippling up from your, your lower chakras. And this is going to be happening to you, whether you like try to do it or not. It's part of your twin flame experience. They're here to help you do this. You're having this twin flame experience in order to heal your problems in your heart. And Basically, whether you try to do this or not, it's going to happen to you. You can just decide how easily you want to move through this. So if you really dive in and just be like, yeah, I'm going to just like, you know, transform my, my heart and like sit in love and take down my barriers and all that. That'll really speed things along and make it easier for you. You can keep resisting. Uh, that'll just drag this out and make it more painful. And you'll manifest more and more and more like conflicting conflict situations uh, that are here to help you. You just want to enjoy them. So it's up to you guys uh, how easy you want to make this on yourself. Okay, moving on up to your throat chakra. Seven of Wands. 
yeah, this, uh, this to me comes back, uh, to this Ace of Swords in your solar plexus. You guys have a lot of frustration energy. You are constantly striving and striving and striving to initiate all these things to get to the top and not necessarily, you know, like you, you guys aren't like leaving bodies behind you, right? You just want to do your own thing. You're not concerned about, you know, you don't want to hurt people on your way to the top. And this isn't even really like a, uh, like a social thing. It's not like you're trying to climb the corporate ladder and you're not really in competition with other people. You're in competition with yourself and you just do what you want to do. I know this because this is what I am like. You know, you wake up in the morning and you see a hill outside your window and you're just like, look at that fucking awesome hill. I want to climb to the top and like, you know, breathe the fresh air and look out at the world and feel like I'm on top of the world. So, you know, you get up, grab some water, throw it in your backpack grab your dog and walk to the top of the hill and it's awesome. And then you come back and your family's out like, eh, where'd you go? You didn't bring your phone. You didn't leave a note and tell us where you were going. We were so worried. And like, why didn't you invite us to go? We feel left behind. Eh. And you're just like, oh my God, like, why can't I just like wake up and walk to the top of the hill when I see the top of the hill? Why does everybody have to be giving me shit every time I do anything just for, <laughs> just for myself? Like that, me walking to the top of the hill didn't have anything to do with anybody else. Why is everybody like, like so frustrating, right? So frustrating. You're just trying to do what you want to do. And people keep giving you shit for it. And people keep trying to stop you. And there's just this resistance and frustration everywhere you go. And you don't understand why people are so up your ass about it because nothing you do is hurting anybody else. It doesn't have anything to do with anybody else. You're just like doing your thing, right? And these people are all up your ass about it and it's driving you nuts. <laughs> so uh, this really brings me back to, you know, the human design idea of manifestors, because if you can learn just that little bit of pragmatism in dealing with other people, you can smooth your way. For example, you know, with the hill, if you had just like taken your phone or just told people, hey, I'm going to the hill, you know, that, then then they wouldn't have been all butthurt about it and you would have made your day a lot easier. I know it seems like, you know, you're asking for permission or like you're just dealing with these other people. And yeah, but I mean, if you want to live in the world with humans, a little bit of pragmatism can go a long, long way, as infuriating as it is. <laughs> so a throat chakra, if you can just learn to like tell people what you're up to before you do it, that is that's what needs to happen here. That'll just help you out, even though it's frustrating and seems stupid. Okay. Third eye, high priestess. You guys are, your, your guys' energy is like so intense. <laughs> so on a spiritual level, you guys are seriously connected to the divine feminine. I, I, I am so drawn to like yin energy right now to like, you know, the black half of the yin yang, which is that feminine, dark chaos energy, right? The infinite power of chaos. The devouring mother archetype. You guys have almost unlimited potential like on the level of your consciousness you guys are highly advanced and right now you guys are getting a lot of divine feminine uh divine feminine activations but i i doubt you guys like are even how do i put it when it comes to the evolution of your consciousness and your spirituality you guys don't need to be like listening to any one type of tradition, any given teacher, any given book. You know, there's a big thing in spirituality in the new age that like harkens back to ancient traditions, ancient wisdom. And there is so much good about that, right? There is so much ancient wisdom in traditional cultures and lost cultures on earth. And we do want to get back to some of that, but you guys are like beyond that. You guys are like, almost like, okay, well, you know, I read all this stuff about the Mayans and I read all these like Hindu sacred texts and that's all well and good and cool. And I've learned a lot from that and, you know, I respect it, but like, it's time to like catapult past that. You guys are more looking to the future 
Um, and you are here to bring in new wisdom, wisdom for the future, wisdom from the higher dimensions. And this is where I want to bring in uh, your crown chakra, four of swords, which this woman is like comatose and look at her hair. Just it's streaming up. I feel like, you know, you guys are claircognizant and you're downloading this information like straight from uh, feminine archetypes in the cosmos. And you probably are doing this in your sleep or even just subconsciously. You don't even need to try. This is happening naturally to you when you are in states of deep meditation, sleep, or rest. What was I saying? Sorry, guys. I'm like getting a little... <laughs> uh, sometimes when I do a really... Uh, get a really high frequency energy like this, um, I start to kind of like lose, I feel like there's like marbles in my mouth and I get really uh, like vertigo <laughs> and I kind of lost my train of thought, but I I know I was talking about uh, something about, yeah, you guys um, are like part of a new wave. You are here to download new wisdom, new energy, stuff that nobody has thought of before. You're not hearkening, hearkening back to the past wisdom. You want future wisdom, knowledge for the future. <sighs> you are like a powerful, powerful interdimensional being. And <laughs> you are here to bring that down to the world. And your twin flame is here to help you do it. And there is nothing but good shit in store for you guys. Yeah. Um, I'm really, uh, I'm really dizzy. <laughs> so I think, I think I said everything I wanted to say. I hope you guys can feel this, like the power and the frequency of your own energy. Cause you're probably, you've probably are always known like deep on like some deep level that you are special, that you are different and that you are powerful. Even if you've like in your physical human life, even if you've lived a life where you were like the lowest of the low, like on a human linear level, like in the human hierarchy, even if you've been the lowest of the low, you always knew that you had this like powerful seed inside of you and that like the essence of your you, like, you know, when you were a kid, you might've thought of like, you know, you're in, like my me, you know, my inner me, something about you, you knew. That was maybe all all you knew, right? But you knew that there was something, some kind of seed inside of you waiting to burst into flame. Yeah. And, you know, this has already been activating within you and it is about to just like <laughs> level up and level up and ripple out and ripple out. So... Yeah, I could keep sitting here kind of spinning in, in circles uh, on your energy here, but I think I got my point across. And I know that those of you this applies to, you guys know exactly what I mean. Um, if my words have been a little jumbled, I'm sorry, but I, uh, I hope you guys can like feel the energy like transmitting through here. Um, so congratulations on your existence. I love you guys and I hope to see you again soon. Okay, pile three, welcome to your reading. I'm going to bring up your root and sacral chakra at the same time, because to me, they're pretty connected. You guys have a really strong foundation. Four of wands for your root chakra. And the queen of pentacles for your sacral chakra. This really just speaks to me of, you have a solid, a firm footing, a happy home. You know, the Four of Wands is always that like party castle, happy home energy. And the Queen of Pentacles for your sacral is, you know, you guys aren't going through any power struggles, um, you know, in terms of your sacral energy. You guys know what you, uh, you know where you stand in the human environment. You know, you know what you want and you know what you are here to create. So much just solidness here. I don't think too much needs to be said about your root and sacral because they're good. Like you guys don't have any problems with that. You're good. <laughs> okay. And your solar plexus chakra, you got a really interesting card. It's the star. So other kin guys, uh, the name of this deck is the other kin tarot. Let me show you the box actually. 
other kin tarot. And I think this word other kin is really important. Um, it can mean different things for different people, but there's definitely something to do with, you know, have you guys ever felt more than human or not merely human? I don't know if you guys relate to non-human animals, to extraterrestrials. There is something hybrid about you. This whole deck, it's called the Other Kintero because it's full of these little hybrid animals. Um, you know, and this, this star card is a woman who, I think it's a, she's a woman with a, the head of a hawk. The star card is also, uh, you know, healing energy. So whatever like pain you guys have gone through before in trying to determine your own identity, um, that, that is being healed right now because you are starting to figure out what that is. So whatever other kin means to you, you're really beginning, that is being activated uh, and healed. Whatever kind of hybrid you guys think you are. Um, I feel like there could, I could really go into this and all the different types of, you know, being you could be, but I feel more called to kind of let this, let this sit as it is. Cause I think you guys know what it is and it could be anything, you know, from your gender identity, your sexual preferences, your all the way up to like, you know, being a hybrid, um, a hybrid human, you know, where your DNA isn't, isn't only human. So I'm going to, I'm going to let that sit as it is. You guys will know what that means to you. But I think the message here is that, yeah, the conflict and pain you guys have experienced because of your confusion or because of your hybrid identity, it is being healed. Uh, the tower moment is past the star. It, the star card comes after the tower. Um, you know, when this, uh, hybrid human hawk has you know fallen down to earth and is gathering water and is healing and starting fresh as her new self so we're going to move on up to the heart chakra ace of pentacles that's a beautiful card to give your heart chakra lots and lots of earth energy for you guys in your heart and wow you know what every single one of these spreads has had an ace for their heart that is that is synchronous. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the first one was Ace of Wands. The second one was Ace of uh, Swords. And you guys are Ace of Pentacles. So, so much earth energy, um, which in your heart, which is really good because, and look, it's even purple and purple here. I was just thinking that, you know, this earth energy will be really good for you in working through your your other kin, like, heart, like other kin identity, right? Because you need to get, grounded and comfortable with being in the body that you're in you know you need to you need to feel comfortable knowing that your body is the one you chose to be in in this life and whatever's wrong with it or whatever you don't like about it it's still the one you chose to be in like you you literally chose to <laughs> to incarnate you know when and where you did so the body is is the one that you can make your peace with even if there's things you don't like about it um and this heart energy is really going to support you. So sit in your heart and connect with the earth, you know, the consciousness of the earth herself. This is such a solid center point. Um, you know, ideally we all want to be able to center ourselves in, the, in our heart and you guys, I don't think we'll have any, any trouble with that. Just connect your heart like straight down into the core of the earth. And if you have conversations with Gaia, that that's a great way to, uh, to help center yourself. That's something I always do to help myself fall asleep. Actually, I uh, like imagine myself like sinking down into the core of the earth where, you know, I have a way of visualizing the consciousness of the planet. And, you know, I ask her, like, can you help me like relax and go to sleep? And it works every time. Bam, I'm out. And I'm a person who's had a lot of trouble sleeping in their life. I wish I'd learned that trick a lot sooner. So, yeah, this is you have a lot of stability in your heart. And this is really a, a place you can lean into for, for stability and for, and for love and for healing and for connecting with the earth. It, that's really good. <sighs> okay, so throat chakra. 
you got the devil. You got the devil, guys. <laughs> so uh, this, to me, comes back to kind of your other kin nature. Whatever has been going on with you guys about your identity, whatever other kin means to you, you know, you're in some kind of closet. I don't care what kind of closet it is, but there's definitely a closet here. And you, you know, nobody really likes to be in a closet. <laughs> so I think, you know, if you don't want to sit in this devil energy with these like compulsions and these fears and these addictions and anxieties, if you don't want to feel tied to your closet, maybe you guys feel like you're really, you really are stuck in the closet. <laughs> you're like you're you're tied there you know like let's see almost like this monster in your closet is holding you in there so since this is in the, in the throat chakra there's something to do with communicating you are not you're not able to communicate who you really are to the world um but i i think there's a, something here about you know you don't need to let the entire world know who you are you only need to let the people who matter know who you are you know, you don't need to be an activist. You don't need to get up on the soapbox and fighting for whatever, whatever your identity is. The whole world, it, it's not necessary for the whole world to know about it. I mean, if you really feel like it is significant for you to let the whole world know about it, then go for it. But that's, that's not necessary, right? That's not necessary for your peace of mind, your peace of heart. Um, you, but you probably do want to let the people close to you, you know, your family, your close friends, the people who are your, your real soul family, you want to be able to communicate to them. You know, you want to be able to come out of your closet to them. And that will bring you a lot of peace. So once you're comfortable, once you're ready, once you've figured out what other kin means to you, then communicate that to the people around you. And that is how you'll be able to cut, like, cut this, these cords of bondage and come out of this closet. And that in and of itself will like heal your throat chakra. <laughs> it, it, it'll like happen at once. You know, healing your throat chakra will help you communicate, but also communicating will help you heal your throat chakra. It's simultaneous and is the same thing. So yeah, I know that's a struggle, guys. Nobody likes to come out of the closet, especially if you guys are in some kind of like really unusual closet. <laughs> I was actually watching uh, Lee Harris. He's got a pretty big YouTube channel. He's like a... He calls himself an energy intuitive. He does like readings on the collective once a month. And he was talking about, you know, when he had to come out like as a psychic or, you know, as an intuitive, he calls himself. He was like, how am I supposed to tell my family that, you know, I hear messages from this like voice talking in my ear and I know things about, you know, people. And he's like, you know, give me a break. I already had to come out as gay. Now I got to come out as psychic. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, you know, there are multiple levels to, to closets. And if, especially if you're in a closet that, is, un is unusual or that people haven't really started coming out of yet, that just makes it extra more difficult. Um, so, but that's probably actually what you're here to do is to get comfortable with your identity and come out of the closet on a small level, just to the people who are important to you. And not only will it be healing for yourself for your throat chakra, it'll also be healing for the collective and for everybody else who is in a similar situation. Let me just make some room here. For our third eye chakra card, three of swords. Yeah, so you guys are having trouble seeing seeing things clearly. And just since the other the other cards here, this probably has to do with your identity and with how people you're afraid people are gonna react to it. Three of swords in the third eye position really makes me think that, you know, it's like your vision is clouded. You're not seeing into the future clearly. So for example, you might think if you come out of this closet that you're really overblowing how bad people's reactions are going to be. You probably will find more support than you think. Even if people are really weirded out or even if they don't really believe you, you know, if they're really truly your family, they will understand and support you anyway. And if they fucking don't, well, then good riddance to them, right? <laughs> so 
yeah, you, you guys need to do some kind of healing with your pituitary gland. I, uh, yeah, I have something, I have some sound healings, uh, by Tom Kenyon. They're free. You just need to like download them from his website. I will link them. I think two of them will be really, really helpful for you guys. I've been using them myself actually, like, cause I'm actually going through a similar energy like this of, you know, coming out of closets <laughs> and, uh, I've been working on my pituitary gland, which is associated with your third eye. Your pineal gland is actually more associated with your crown chakra. Pituitary gland is for your, uh, your third eye. So two, two particular sound healings. One is, um, essentially there's a big long thing that you guys can read about it. It's a transmission from the Hathors and it's essentially about holding the energy of non-duality. And I'm going to recommend this just because I think it's helpful for everybody who is having trouble gaining perspective, seeing things clearly and worrying about the future gaining perspective is key to that and sitting in non-duality is the best way to do that um and then the other one is a pituitary gland activation and i i'm almost hesitant to recommend this to people because the first time i did it uh like tom Kenyon recommends right on his website you know saying like be careful with this you know this uh can have actual physical this has actual physical effects on your pituitary gland and therefore your entire endocrine system so be careful with it don't overdo it you could you know end up having like physical side effects and i was like eh bullshit you know i don't really know if sound healing is real anyway blah and then i fucking found out <laughs> how real it is and i did overdo it it's like a what is it i don't remember. it's like five minutes i think and i decided to listen to it instead of just listening to it once to start i listened to it like four times in a row and as I was listening to it, I started feeling this like intense pain, like two points of pain in the middle of my back. And I was like, that's weird. What the hell is that? What could that be? Could that possibly be related to this pituitary gland activation I'm listening to? And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. There's no like endocrine glands in your back. <laughs> and then I looked it up and found out that yes, there are. Your adrenal glands sit on top of your kidneys and they're exactly where I was feeling this pain. So this was such a profound experience for me because I figured out that, holy shit, this is like one of those confirmations where I had really physical, tangible confirmation that all of this shit is real, like so real. And so seriously, guys, this pituitary gland activation or healing that I'm going to link you guys. I mean, you're going to do what you feel is right, right? But I'm telling you that I overdid it. I listened to it like four times in a row and it left me in physical pain for like four days. Like I could feel, so my adrenal glands were activated and they were sore. I could feel it in my back. I had a third eye headache for a few days. Um, and I could actually like, I could, I was having like pains in other areas of my body everywhere, whether you have endocrine glands, I, I was like feeling it. They were like swollen and felt, I felt sore everywhere. So since I'm recommending this to you guys, I would say I really, really like recommend like listening to it literally once and then like sitting on it, like don't listen to it for like at least a day, see how you feel and then really, really go slowly because I personally had the experience of this, like just listening to these sounds had physical side effects for me, <laughs> which is cool because that means that it is like really real and it really works. And since then, I've actually been like my third eye has been activated. Like it, it fucking works. Not just like making you physically hurt, but like it really has been activating my third eye. Um, so please, you know, go easy with it. Don't do what I did. Don't overdo it. Listen to it once and then listen to it once more on another day and then go from there. You'll have to feel out, feel it out how it works for you. But yeah, that was a big tangent about that one thing. But I think that's so important because three of swords in your third eye, you guys need like pituitary gland um, healing. And that is the, this track I'm going to link you is the best way that I have ever found in order to do that. And crown chakra is the nine of cups. That is a beautiful way to top things off. This is such a, like a good wish. Uh, like it's a wish, wish come true card. To me, this is a sign that you guys are really uh, connected with the cosmos.
that you really have a lot of uh, love and support in the higher dimensions and that your soul family is with you and around you. And that I think uh, any like downloads you guys get are probably like downloads of love. Like pe people are sending you are sending you love energy down down into you. And I think. Yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot lot to say about that. That is just really, really good, positive, loving, loving news about your crown chakra and your connection to the cosmos. So I don't really have too much more to say about that. Um, because for you, your guys' main issues are your other kin, whatever other kin means to you, communicating your self out into the world and your third eye. That's what you guys need to work on. Everything else is solid. So good luck to you guys. I'll link that Tom Kenyon, those two links down there. Please don't overdo it. <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for somebody like, you know, having really bad back pain from their adrenal glands for like four days. I don't want that to happen to anybody to you because it happened to me. So learn from my mistakes. <laughs> um, good luck, you guys. I hope to see you again soon.